Good morning. Uh, welcome to a, another live webinar training, CPD, whatever you wish to call it. My name is Robert Newman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I am the tax director of Carter, Collins and Meyer, a firm of accountants that I helped start and probably I'm really the starter of, I'm sure my business partners would disagree, but there you go. Uh, in 2010, um, I have, this is the third firm of accountants I have helped found. Um, I have also founded several other businesses over the years. And today's webinar is about how to get the most out of every single day, because not only do I do business, I have studied several um academic qualifications at the same time as running businesses. I'm married. Uh, I have pets. I teach martial arts. I enter running races. I do all sorts of other things as well. And people many times say, how on earth do you do it all? I am nobody special. This is nothing special that we actually do. This is simply the tips and uh, ways I organize myself to allow me to get the most out of every single day. Um, I with possibly one exception of, with what I'm going to talk about, I don't think I've actually invented any of what we're, we're going to do today. I've picked it up elsewhere. As I say, there's one possible exception, and even that in many forms exists. It's only the format in which I've actually used it. This webinar is not going to be my ugly mug lecturing at you all the time. It is mainly going to be some screens, um, which I will share with you in a moment. Please do ask questions as we go through. Please do feel free to, to um, put down that Q&A box, which is down the bottom of your screen, about there on the screen. Hopefully I'm pointing to the right place. Um, happy to answer any questions as we go, if I possibly can, as we talk. Um, the whole thing should last. 45 to 50 minutes it will certainly be under an hour with everything included into it uh, i do pre the events of 2020 i actually used to run this as a full day course so some of it may be uh, fast paced uh, some of it may not make immediate sense but for those of you who are on the course uh, today i will be posting this up onto youtube afterwards with links to download both the written book that accompanies it and the, uh, the one resource that I say is amazing. Um, without further ado, I will now transfer onto screen sharing and hopefully we can get going. As I say, forgive me as we do this because there is the transition bit, but here we are, Microsoft PowerPoint and slideshow. So good morning. I'm gonna switch off uh, this bit if we can. Uh, I remember how to do it. Welcome. Ah, we already have a question. Is this live? Yes, it is. Thank you for asking, Carl. Um, that's me. I've already done my bit. Already said who I am. The um, we have another. Yes. Okay. That's what we're covering today, getting stuff done, your most powerful tool, the top, how to make notes that have meaning, drowning in emails and 10 tips to reduce your stress levels. Over the last 25 years of me doing things, having been a soldier, having been a part trained physiotherapist, having started and lost many businesses uh, and sold for successfully some of them, um, I reckon these are the five areas in life which are going to be causing you as business owners some of the biggest problems that you're actually going to have. So getting stuff done is the largest of these sections. Um, the most powerful tool, the top tool is something that I've only, I've been working on for years and that has only actually come into its own this year. And I've only managed to actually get it into its own format this year. Um, I absolutely utterly swear by the top tool. I think it is one of the best things I've ever actually used uh, for what I do. Um, how to make notes that, that have meaning, again, is particularly important for people who, like yourselves, will be meeting people, will actually be going out and will actually have to 
write down what they do so that they then make sense later on it. But truthfully, if you are in any business at all and you are doing anything in business, you should be having notebooks. You should be making notes on more than one occasion. My notes have literally saved me. Um, I have every notebook that I have used since 1993. The format use has actually now become trendy. Um, but I've been doing it long before it was trendy. It just came naturally to me and it is something that I will run through on here. Drowning in email. I am an email master in that I receive about 600 emails a day. I have to manage those. They come in from all sorts of sources for all sorts of things, not just to do with accountancy, not just to do with state planning. They also relate to other businesses that we're involved with. We as, as partners, myself and my business partners own a couple of franchises. Um, we have to deal with those. As I say, I teach martial arts, so I have to deal with that. Um, I am involved in all sorts of other charitable things. I'm governor of a sixth form college and all this type of stuff. So I have to manage the email and I have some quick and dirty tips on those. And then finally, we will round up with stress level management. Um, that is something that historically has actually been quite challenging for me personally and I will regale you with top stories of that as we move through so next up getting into getting stuff done now as I say I have never I don't think invented any of this that this um, <clears throat> this is always coming from somewhere else but I'm sure you can relate to this cartoon Saturday morning I can finally get all my errands done over the weekend Saturday night it's fine got sunday it'll all be okay monday morning oh my god how did i end up here getting stuff done i can't use the official name for because that's trademarked and copyrighted and all that so which is why we call it gsd the original creator of this is actually david allen uh, i do rate his book and i would suggest you get it you can get older versions off of amazon for a few quid but this is my summary of it essentially um Getting stuff done is a way or an approach of managing things as opposed to some bigger picture version of what you are trying to achieve. This appeals to me because I'm quite a practical led person. I suppose one of the competing um, versions of time management and um, production management and keeping a track of what you've got going on is probably Stephen Covey's ha Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That comes at this from a very different point of view. That comes at this from a top-down view, whereas um, GSD comes at it from a bottom-up view. It greatly depends on the individual, and some of those that I work with prefer Covey's work to Alan's work. Um, it looks at creating the bigger picture of who you want to be and what you are trying to get out of life, which is great, but I find too much navel gazing leads me around in circles. And truthfully, I get easily distracted and bored and end up watching cat videos on YouTube instead of actually doing anything. GSD is a lot more about, oh my God, I'm drowning in crap. I've got loads of stuff to deal with. How do I practically manage it? Um, and it can be run on paper, it can be run electronically, you can run it on your computer system, you can have it on phones, you can have it in a file of facts, a folder, a piece of paper, it doesn't actually matter. The principle is the same. It also greatly leads into my approach to managing email um, and directly gave rise to the top tool itself. I am a huge advocate of this, and I would suggest anybody who has lots of stuff to deal with also at least consider this approach. It has worked for me over many years throughout any type of business, throughout any type of activity. When I was training for the Great North Run, this worked for me. When I was training for the various boxing fights that I've had, this worked for me. When I was going from my second down in Shotokan Karate, this worked. And when I was the finance director of a venture capital firm that had 200 million pounds invested 
this also worked. Um, the specific approach is to gather and organize tasks resting on three approaches or pillars, as the system calls it. That is, gather your incomplete activities into a trusted system. Narrow them down to ones you're in full control of and really need to complete. And keep active reminders about these that you review regularly. Now, that's it. Gather the stuff into a trusted system, narrow it down, and keep a control of it. So gathering it into a trusted system. For me, my trusted system is actually email, followed by my top tool. But for you, it could be, and prior to email, actually, it used to be a concertina file, known usually in this system as a tickler file, and I will come on to that. Tickler files are particularly good if you are paper-based, um, but files generally, books generally, are equally as good. Anything that is a trusted system. Now, I have seen plumbers work this perfectly well using shoeboxes put on the passenger seat of their white van. It doesn't matter what the trusted system is. It's gathering it into one spot that allows you to know that it is in that one spot and not spread across umpteen different things. If you have it spread across umpteen different things, you won't be able to narrow it down and you won't be able to manage it. So whatever it is that's right for you to get it into that one place, use that. But you then need to regularly go through it. I like Sunday evenings. Sunday evenings usually work for me because I can do it whilst other family related things are going on. Um, we can be having a TV dinner, we can be watching Sunday evening rubbish, but I can go through my emails, which is my trusted system, because I will email myself everything, including scans of documents. Um, I will categorize it according to my five email boxes, and then I will write out anything that needs to be done onto my top tool. That provides both the control and gives me the regular reminder. As David Allen actually put it, the purpose of GSD is to allow your mind to have ideas and not for holding those ideas. Get them down on pieces of paper. Sometimes with my own team, this can actually give rise to stress itself. So I now have to explain how I work because I am renowned for sending people emails at 2.30 in the morning when it's coming to my head. And at first, some unfortunate people in my team have actually thought that I expected responses at 2.30 in the morning. And of course, if you respond to me at that time, I'll respond back to you. So some poor schmucks that have, have been in my businesses have actually ended up working all night on occasion because they thought that that's what was expected. Um, I now explain as they join that although I I'm happy to uh, do that. Uh, they don't have to. If I'm emailing you in the early hours of the morning, I'm not expecting a response. It's simply my GSD. It's simply me getting it out of my head and putting it into my own control system. I tend to blind copy myself into everything so that I then have a reminder system. That is the equivalent of having a carbon copy or in old money, which you would have on uh, I used to actually have them on blue pieces of paper that you would put into your concertina file. <clears throat> so capture, collate everything you consider incomplete into your life. These are known as open loops, be it an idea, be it a thing you're going to do, be it a trip you've always wanted to make, be it anything, whatever is an open loop, whatever is going through your head at that moment, capture it, get it down, write it on a piece of paper, write it on a post-it note that you're, go that you're going to capture into one specific place, um, put it onto an email, whatever you're going to do, get it down on paper, get it out of your head, make it that you no longer have to think about it. If you're doing this, and this is one of the things that's important, this part of the process has no boundary. And in truth, none of this process has a boundary between your work and your personal life. All of that stuff takes up space in your brain. 
And as it passes through your brain, capture it. Don't think about it in terms of this is to do with martial arts or this is to do with estate planning. Think of it in terms of stuff that's going through your head. Get it out, get it on that paper, have it as a place that allows you to capture it. You don't want regular lit, you, you don't want massive long lists of this in different places. You want a central pot where it's in. Once you've captured it into that inbox, clarify it. This is the time to process and empty that inbox in a methodical fashion. And as I say, I'll come on to how I do that with email towards the end of this particular session, but it requires a regular review and for you to go through things to know what is there. Then action it. Now actioning it is pretty straightforward. You've got three options. If it's already dealt with, bin it. If it's going to be done at some point in the future, add it to your someday maybe list, which I have a particular version of in email, or your tickler file, which is a concertina file, which I still rate highly. No one ever listens to me about them, but I still rate highly. And or if it's in your one week plan, which we'll come on to, onto your top tool. And then keep a reference list of just useful information. So you've got three choices. Bin it, make a decision as to when you're going to do it in the future, or file it. Now, I would probably, since writing this, add a fourth decision of delegate it. And delegating it, though, requires you to have a follow-up process. So I would possibly be looking at bin it, future it, follow it up with somebody else. So you've sent it that email to them at 2.30 in the morning, asking them to take uh, action with regards to the Smith case. But you then need to put that into a follow-up folder that you know that you are able to follow up with them in due course to ensure that they've actually done it, or you're keeping it just for information. Now, the information reference listing, if you're keeping everything electronic, is the is very simple nowadays because you don't need complicated filing systems because you can rely on the search function. And one of the best reference list tools, in my opinion, if you are electronic based, is probably Evernote because it, is, it allows you to store things very simply from whatever electronic forum you are in and then just search keywords to bring them back. Much easier than having hard copy filing systems, which is what I used to actually have. So once you've clarified it, seem to have frozen, you then need to consider, does it have more than one step to complete and will it take more or will it take more than two minutes? If it's less than two minutes to do, you can do it at that point as you are capturing and clarifying. Now that might be an easy decision immediately. That email comes in and you can immediately re respond with yes, no, agreed. And I have a reputation for doing that. Somebody will send me a very long email, essentially asking me, do I accept the point or the approach they are trying to take? And I will respond with one word, agreed. Uh, that can appear abrupt sometimes to some people I work with, but they soon realize it's simply part of my own system. If it takes more than two minutes to complete, you are now into a project. This is a separate folder or file within itself. It is in no particular order, but it is a project list. That is the follow-up action list. Projects usually require either concentrated thought or action from other people. And again, how I specifically do that in email, I will come to shortly. As part of clarifying it, as I say, I think I have covered this, but am I the right person to do it? Or is there a specific time to do it? Both of which are either delegate it or plan it for the future. If you're delegating it, you need that follow-up system. If you're planning it for the future, you need your tickler file in some version. Organize it. So it's about having 
folders. It's about having lists which you can sort, but for non-actionable stuff, um, the simplest way, or for actionable, for non-actionable stuff, it's a reference file. This can be a, a hard copy lever arch folder for actionable stuff the simplest way is to have either an electronic or non-electronic tickler file literally a concertina file and i literally use a 1 to 31 concertina file 15 quid from amazon i get hold of that thing and i replicate this within electronic folders as well but i get hold of that electronic document or that hard copy document i look at it and go this is going to take more than two minutes when am i actually going to action it i look at my diary and what i have coming up and i say i am going to undertake this on the 15th of the month <clears throat> i then write in my diary work to do for john smith will take one hour i block out that hour on the 15th of the month and i put that piece of paper or electronic folder or electronic file into the folder or into the slot for the 15th everything therefore that i need to do on the 15th is there i know what my workflow is i know what my plan is for that day be it estate planning be it taxation be it accountancy be it repairs to the roof running the cat to the vet, picking up medication for the family or anything else that I have to do. Just think about this carefully. Anything goes into that 15th. What that means is when I'm undertaking my weekly review and writing out my top, I know what my week is coming. What that also allows me to see is what slots I have available and what time I can put in there. Now, in terms of talking about slots, before you start any of this, block out into diaries that those things that you already know you have to do. So if you are planning your week and you know that you want to go to the gym four times in that week and you are a morning person, make appointments. Now, someone's just asked me, Kim, Kim Lesh has just asked me, what do I put into the tickler file? You put whatever piece of paper or whatever email or whatever ever electronic document you're working on. So if you have received, for example, a letter that you have to action, you put the letter into the tickler file. If you've received an email that you have to action, you put the email into the electronic tickler file. If you have written a post-it note to yourself saying, I must buy more bread, you put the post-it note into the tickler file in the day that you're going to do it. It's whatever actionable thing you have, piece of paper, electronic folder, whichever works for you, you are going to do. So if it's a reminder for yourself or if it's an, a, a document or if it's whatever it is that you work from, that's what goes in there onto it. So you have your 31 days, you have your carryover, you it's an ongoing process. So if you pick up, if you're at the 28th of the month, as we are today, and you pick up something and say it's going to be the 12th of November, you put it in for the 12th of the following month. If you get to that day, you take out everything for the 12th that you needed to do. And you know at that point, or you find during the course of the day that you can't actually get to it, you look at it again, come to when it is that you think you will be able to do it, refile it and carry on. Again, on a Sunday, you can then put that back into your top planner and actually work through your week. Very simple stuff. Actionable items, we've already talked about this. Calendar should be sacred. This is what I say. So your calendar is absolutely the center of how you work. Your diary, again, it doesn't matter if it's electronic. It doesn't matter if it's um, hard copy. Nowadays, I work electronic calendars. Um, Although for planning tools, I still prefer paper. In fact, I've actually gone back to paper. I think paper is better for planning tools. <clears throat> but the, the calendar, you make appointments for yourself for everything. So if you have work to do, you set it as an appointment. If you have to sit at a desk, you set it as an appointment. If you have to go to the gym, you set it as an appointment. If you have to go on to Tesco's to buy the weekly shopping, you set it as an appointment. You put everything as an appointment. Within the appointment that you make for yourself, you put a specific action within there. So pick up dry cleaning. Take out cat to vet 
um, undertake will planning for inheritance tax, whatever it is that you have to do, you need to put as much detail into that as is actually useful to you. The specific documents on which they may be based so that you have made an appointment for yourself on the 12th to write that person's will and the fact find document for, that is going to allow you to write that person's will will be in your tickler file for the 12th so that when you it gets to 10 30 and you're going to sit down and physically write it you can phys you can literally pull it out of the tickler and there it is hopefully that makes some sense to people if that doesn't please ask the questions now because i'm happy to talk about it further it is the way you will never lose anything this specific system i learned before it was called getting things done or getting stuff done as i refer to it here it was actually talked to me by my last boss my last boss is a genuine billionaire he started with nothing in the back streets of bolton and owns half the high street nowadays. And he used this system long before it had a name, paper-based with a one to 31 concertina file and a pilot case. He put the concertina file into the pilot case and everything for everything that crossed his desk went into his planner this way. Kamesh, you would use it for everything. It's not what ad hoc. If you use it for ad hoc, the system doesn't work. Every single thing that crosses your path goes into your tickler file, be it an electronic or a hard copy. It doesn't matter which version of it it is. So moving on, we've talked about organizing it, already covered that. Reflecting it, this is your Sunday review. This is, or whatever day of the week works for you. It doesn't have to be a Sunday. That time where you look at your week coming, you look at your folders, you, you go through or you look at your, your calendar for that week, you write out your planner, you make the appointments and you review the documents within your tickler system or within your email system or whatever it is that you are specifically using. In doing that, it gives you the chance to review. It gives you the opportunity to look at it as to what is has to be done next, whether it's still live, whether it has closed, or if you need to undertake further planning. It also allows you to see any lurking open loops and anything else that you need to take action on. By doing this weekly review, it gives you that time, that headspace to actually be in control of it and to refocus onto your own individual specific goals. Engage, we've talked through, this is when you're physically going to do the stuff, what you're physically going to do, and to have that trusted system that captures everything in one spot. That is the point. If you have 50 different places where you store things, you, won't ha you don't have a system. You need one central depot for everything. Um, going all in, I know that's a lot to take in that we've talked about in the last 28 minutes. The nest of this will be lighter. I, I swear it does get easier. Um, I am going to slightly contradict my own advice here. I write in this slide, don't go all in at once. Don't put everything in it. It's where people fail. Um, I think that your the tickler file system works exceptionally well and i think you can start going all in immediately the key point to it though is to have a calendar where you schedule things and part of that schedule is a review if you schedule the review of what it is that you have coming up and you have a central depot for storing everything and then make a plan that is how this will work <coughs> now Nobody is perfect. It will break down every so often. Um, you will have to have times where you start all over again. Um, I tend to fall apart around holiday times. Uh, in the run-up to holidays, I'm massively productive. I get loads done. I go on holiday. I relax completely, forget all about all schedules and everything that's going on. And it then takes me a couple of weeks to get back into things once I get back from that trip. Um, that's fine. That's part of this process. You will fall apart. And if you look at my top tool, 
there are weeks where it is massively used and organized and there are weeks when it's not you are not a robot you will rise and fall with this it will work sometimes and it won't work on others don't worry that is all part of the process so the top tool the most powerful thing you've got um <clears throat> it's such a simple thing it's disappointingly simple when you'll see it in a second i've bigged it up massively as if this is some revolutionary thing it is it really is but it is actually such a simple thing it's so easy that you will be disappointed what is the top tool? The top tool is a one page planner. It's taken me 25 years to perfect. <clears throat> There's no special equipment for this. It's one piece of A4 on a printer, double sided. It's not your diary. It's not your to do list. It's not your tickler file. It is your task planner, your goal planner, and the secret source, I believe, of actually getting done those things that you really want to. The reason it is, is because it keeps them in front of your eyes. One of the biggest reasons why goals fall apart is that people forget about them. When I was going for P Company, which is pre-parachute selection training for the parachute regiment, which, which I had the privilege of serving in, the physical tests you had to do were extreme I am not a natural athlete, but by keeping in my head it, or the desire that I had for the Red Beret, I could create the, in, the motivation for the endurance, the physical endurance that I needed to undertake. And one of the things I did for that was I actually wrote on my mirror in my bathroom that civvy no red hat yes now that's a very simple phrase i then wrote underneath it there is no tomorrow what that meant to me was that however hard it was however cold it was whether the rain was coming down or it was three feet in snow i had to go out today running doing the, the calisthenics that I had to do and all the other training, physical training necessary if I wanted to achieve the Red Beret. And everything in the top tool works on a similar principle. It is something putting it in front of you at all times. And here it is. This is the, the one page of it. And I'll show you the other in a second. So... You've got Friday, you've got Saturday. This is, my, this is my current one. You can see the dates on it. You've got a week review to look at what happened. And you've got a week planner. So from your Sunday review, you will write down your specific goals to feel in control, to do 30 minutes of exercise a day, to do three hours of work on my MBA project. I have to undertake a mailer because we're sending out 2000 mailers, I've got to, to, to write another five tips in my new book. I have written 18 of 101 tax tips. I need to contact the Karate Federation, et cetera, et cetera. These are the goals, the lesser goals for this week. This is the big stuff. The end of the week, I'm going to review how it went. On my big three, did I get zero, 25, 50, 75, 100%? What was my biggest win? What worked for me? What lost for me? How could I improve my productivity? On the other side to it, Monday the 26, 27, 28, I have three a day. So yesterday was to actually update my planner because I had skipped it Monday, which is why it was a blur. Prepare this presentation, undertake various things that I needed to do, even down to as boring as um, get bread, hot chocolate, sandwich fillers, etc. Today, I had to pay the wages and salaries of the staff to start off with. I've got my 30 minutes to do. I've got to get various things. I'm doing this CPD presentation and I've got two other events for the day. 
this is my day-to-day -day planner this which forms tasks for larger goals such as being in control on my MBA project or my 30 minutes of exercise a day, which I didn't manage yesterday, um, and, but, and constantly keeps it in front of me. Now, to those of you wanting this, I'm going to put a link up in a moment, but I'm going to show you why, why this tool and why this is particularly good in a very short video in a second. It's, um, and for those, somebody's asked me what the number two is up here. I have bipolar disorder. And bipolar disorder can actually be crippling for many people. I have a system, which I worked out years ago, of managing my own moods with bipolar disorder on a scale of plus 10 to minus 10. And the two at the top is to do with that. Two is within a stable range. Again, I have managed bipolar disorder by using all of these as well and all of these tips and tools. I need to get on top of this at least eight hours of sleep a day. I have to ensure that I have three decent meals a day, etc. So how does this actually work? Well, Here's the short video I'm going to talk you through. Why is this good? Well, look, here's the piece of, here's the piece of paper. Why it's good is because it's so easy to have with you at all times, but in half. You can then fold it in quarters. Like so. You can then fold that in half. So at any one point, that is all you need to see. On each individual day, you can then refold the paper into quarters. So your planner can be with you at all times, wherever you are. And you can take a pencil or a pen and update it as you go. All the bulky books, all the bulky electronics, everything else are not as useful as this planner because of its portability, its ease of access, its accessibility, and its cost. It's free. That's why this is the most powerful tool you have. The one-page planner, the top, the one-page planner, is so powerful because it is so flexible and so easy to have with you. Far easier than having any complicated books, electronic documents, or anything. It can be taken anywhere at any point. You could be in shorts and a T-shirt and still have this with you. Hopefully you see that. So where can I get, you can get this from, you can download it for free here, my formatted version. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it on screen for a moment to allow you to do it. On the YouTube video that I will be, uh, that I will put up, this, this link will be there. HTTP colon backslash backslash bit.ly backslash CCM underscore T-O-P-P. There's an understore there. Now, I set out to create this, just to clarify, I set out my week goals on a Sunday and I will plan one or two days in advance using the tickler file and any arising situations. Anything I specifically know I've got to do, like if you looked at that planner and on Friday it said, white heart because for the weekend my wife and myself are going away i will put in there already i have a couple of things to do to do with that because i'm going to organize some flowers in the room etc and it, that's meaningful for me which is why i know it's there i won't complete absolutely everything my three goals a day will be done as i finish the day before so at seven or eight o'clock as I finish work, I will plan my three goals for the next day. 
Hopefully that makes sense to you with regards to those. We've still got a couple more sections to go. Please do have a look at the top. It really is your most powerful tool. So moving on to it. How to take notes that have meaning. This came to me naturally and about 18 months ago, two years probably now, I read a book called Bullet Journals that did basically what I did. And it now seems to have become quite trendy. Um, notes are your salvation. And specifically, the one time it, uh, I can particularly quote where the notes did specifically save me was Oak Tree Financial Services. Now, you can find all this on Google. This is all public record. I'm not saying anything that uh, is unusual. But having left the army, I trained as an accountant and having finished my training, I decided to set up on my own in the late 1990s. And I decided it was going to be a great idea to try and partner up, for want of a better term, with a financial advisor. So I contacted my professional regulator who put me in touch with a firm of financial advisors in the Midlands, although I'm based in the Northwest. I drove down to Nottingham to meet them, quickly realized there was no synergy between us. But as we were wrapping up and leaving, one of the directors of the company said, actually, I could do with some independent advice from an accountant. Could I book you for some of your time? And um, with not much else to do at that moment, I thought what a wonderful idea this was. I agreed a fee of a thousand pounds for the day, went away, got a check from him for the thousand pounds, came back the following week thinking this is amazing. I've made a thousand pounds for the day, sat down and his opening lines were, um, I'd be meaning to get some advice because um, we're stealing all the client's money. And uh, so far we've stolen 20 million and I don't know what to do about it. How should I get myself out of the situation? Now, about two years after this particular conversation, it blew up and it became part of the papers and all of them got prosecuted. And the lawyers who were doing the investigation decided that because I had professional indemnity insurance, they were going to try and sue me. Because um, clearly I had to have be an easy target. Now, the fact that I had contemporaneous notes that made sense, outlining what he told me, the actions taken, the actions arising, and what came out of it, directly saved me. Uh, I had to rush down to my own lawyers. I had to produce all of these notes. I had to go through everything. And we put a hell of a defense together immediately from everything that had arisen. And I never heard another word about it. Notes save you. So <clears throat> taking notes in anything is essential. There is a structure to doing it properly. Uh, I'm not talking about shorthand here. I wish I could do shorthand. I can't. Unfortunately, that is one of those skills that I think is dying out rapidly. It can help having transcripts of things. I know if you've got smartphones, you can record stuff so much easier nowadays than you once did. But there's easier ways of doing it. Buy A4 ring bound pads. Buy one, use it every day. Have at least a page a day. Buy any you like. I just buy cheap ones from the supermarkets. Nowadays, once upon a time, I actually used to buy quite flat, fancy ones. <coughs> um, one point I had a leather cover from Smithson and used to buy all these things that went in it, but you don't need any of those. Leave the first piece of paper blank on both sides. Keep used ones forever. I've already told you the story of, financial, of Oak Tree Financial Services. The blank first page will become the index. <coughs> Excuse me. Start each day with a new page and write down everything that happens as conversations, be they telephone calls, be they thoughts, be they whatever. Draw a line between each point. I probably should put a picture in here for the future of a page of my own notes. I have got some pictures of the physical bits that I use in a second, you will see. But literally, document your day as you go through. Have it written down. Now, some of it will be very irrelevant. Some of it will be very short. Some of it will be very scrappy. Some of it will be a lot longer. If you have a complicated meeting with somebody, these notes could go on for pages and pages and pages. Doesn't matter. Don't worry about killing trees. That's not the point. 
You don't have to use every scrap of pay, pay in it. The point is to manage your life, your stress, your situation. At each new section, write a heading. So you've created a page, you write the date, you, you then put telephone call, 1045, Fred Smith rang about requiring uh, to get me the dividend vouchers for his tax return. That's it. Draw a line underneath that. Next bit, next bit, next bit, next bit. If there's a to do, you will mark it up. And I have a specific way that I would suggest you mark things up. You write them as bullets. And this is why I say it's become known, trendy to call it bullet journals. You have task events and notes. A task, I use a dot, a note, I use a dash, an event, I use an O. It doesn't matter what your annotation is for these. That's what I use, provided you have a consistent formula. So task is to do something. Notes are things you don't want to forget. Events are things that are going to happen in the future. This all becomes part of your tickler file for the future, be it electronic, be it otherwise. I have used electronic note taking devices. I have bought expensive tablets. I have bought all sorts of things. I'll be honest with you. I still find a book, an A4 book, a pen, the easiest. If you prefer other versions of that, so be it. What I do do nowadays is that actions and events and notes that are relevant to business. I only tend to do this on business. I don't do it otherwise. I actually photograph an email to myself, just use my smartphone. So if I've got John Smith is sending in dividend vouchers for his tax return, and that's a note, and I want to put that on the John Smith file so that other people know about it, I will take a photograph of the note in my A4 page, and I will email it into my emailing system, into myself, um, we actually have a fancy email system where every client has a client code. If you put the client code in the email address, it automatically goes on their folder. So I will take the photograph of John Smith's note. I will put his client code into the email uh, name, uh, into, into the subject line, and I will then just email it to myself. In doing that, it means it's captured and put onto John Smith's folder. Um, the... Electronic is great, but I'd be honest, I still find for physically capturing and planning, it's easier on paper. It's so much, it doesn't break, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, it's just better to have it that way. By all means, you can then turn it back into electronic if that works for you. And as an accountancy practice, we are almost paperless. Not that we don't generate the paper in the first place, but we then turn it back into electronic, be that a photograph, be that a PDF, be that a scan, JPEG, whatever. So having bullets it, tasked it, and I have marks for that. So if there's a task, it's a dot. Once the task is complete, I cross through it. If I'm going to forward the task on, or um, if I am scheduling it for the future, and if it's nothing to do with anything anymore, I put a line through it. Really simple. It doesn't matter. You don't have to use that code. You don't have to use that nomenclature. It, that doesn't matter. That's the version I use. But have a method. And whilst you are learning your own method on your front page that you have left blank, have a key. Write out what the stuff means to start off with. Events, dots, once they're done, I put a cross through them. Notes, dead simple. Dashes, I just mean it's a note. Uh, so look, <clears throat> this is the sort of thing that then means. They've got a signifier to make sure something is important. So on an actual page, that's what a page of my notes looks like. That's an actual page. Wednesday the 11th or 5th, 11th Wednesday. Note, signifier, task, action, etc. all the way down. Dead easy. Very revolutionary, allows you to completely capture notes in a way that makes things very easy to read, very easy to understand how to grasp and have use for the future. Once the, the notebook is complete, I number every page. <coughs> you can see down the bottom. Having numbered every page, I then index every page on the blank 
pages that I left at the front. So page 36 has notes for the 5th of the 11th and the 5th of the 12th, etc. Moving on. Drowning in email. Email is the curse of modern life in many respects, but also how I certainly live. Um, I actually have read that Alan Sugar used to live on fax machines in, back in the day. Uh, he used to send and receive hundreds of faxes every day. His reasoning for wanting to do it on fax is the same as my reasoning for wanting to do it on email. Telephone calls are great. They are <coughs> much better at communicating nuance and tone than emails are. However, despite making notes, they are not a permanent record. And in my experience, clients are weasels. <coughs> you will say to do something, they won't do it and then blame you for it. Um, by having it in a written form, you have a written record which no one can dispute. Remember that an email is not a casual conversation. It is no different than sending a professional letter of old. Now, it can be short, <coughs> a couple of sentences, but it is your permanent record. And again, it is one of those ways of risk management in anything that you do, which is why I prefer <coughs> using email. Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. I prefer using email than anything for the purposes of organizing business activities because you therefore have it forever. Do look at the various pieces of software that are available for capturing and filing emails. Specifically, I use Virtual Cabinet. There are many others that can be done. This compares a database of email addresses, specifically clients and business contacts, against the emails coming in and going out and automatically files them into individual folders within a document management system, um, allowing very, very easy access from all, um, well, in my wider team, 140 people, in my immediate team, 38 people, um, as to whole histories of conversations. It is comparable for those of you that have been in professional service firms of old to the correspondence files that you used to get. Um, it's, um, there are others, there are plenty of others. There's things like InView and DocuSoft and all the rest of it, but my version, the, well, the one that I use is Virtual Cabinet. If you Google that, it will come up. It is not cheap to start off with. The initial setup is an investment. After that, it becomes very cheap. Uh, for all 140 per year, it is about two grand for 140 people. Um, initially, I think we paid about 15,000 to get it going. Um, but again, worth it in my circumstances. Others are available. There are plenty of others. I would spend some time on Google. Um, and talk to your IT people for, for that type of stuff. But even within that, even if you're a one-man band and don't need that type of system in place, here is how I would suggest you organize your email and capture it. Ditch subjects for deadlines. Don't file by subject, file by when you've got to action it. Don't create specific folders for emails. Rely on the search mechanism, if you have to find old stuff and don't have a folder for each individual client in your email server or in your email program, I use Outlook. Instead, I have an uncluttered inbox that's processed to zero every day and five folders in total. Um, the five folders are <clears throat> the inbox, holding pen until I do something with it, I clear it daily. By the end of the day, it is back down to zero. <clears throat> Excuse me, go. If I can reply immediately, agreed, I do so. If not, I have folder two today, folder three this week, folder four this month, this quarter, folder five, FYI. Now, FYI, I actually refer to as cabinet. Cabinet is um, filing cabinet. I'm storing it for the future. Now, I tend to put Anything that has been dealt with goes into cabinet. Unless it's complete rubbish, it's some spammy uh, new water filter or that type of rubbish, which I'll just delete immediately. <clears throat> um, everything else goes into cabinet and is stored there. And I have today, this week, this month. <clears throat> Today's should not be very much. 
if you can respond to it immediately, respond to it. If you're having to do it today, it's pretty much an immediate thing. And if it's an immediate thing, you should really be trying to do it there. This week, that should form part of your planning system this month, this quarter. Simple as that. That is how you process email. Together with, can it be delegated? Can you get other people to do it with your tickler system? If it's going to be a project, print it out. Have it hard copy if you like working hard copy and working through a particular system. I personally have a one to 31 folders online on, a, on, on my desktop. I use that. There's your email system. That's it. Show no mercy. If you do, email will become your master. I'm not going to cover the five tips. <coughs> I can read those separately. Uh, as I say, I will make these slides downloadable. We are coming to the end of our hour. My voice is starting to dry up, so I am going to have to slightly rush the next bit. Um, stress relief. We're nearly there. Top 10 tips for stress. Um, these are the things that I believe work for me. I have been a stress head. I did, have, I, as I've said before, I have bipolar disorder, and I have had a full breakdown with that at the heart of the financial crisis in 2008, which required hospitalization. Um, I do understand stress. I have managed without any of those things since 2008. I no longer even need medications for the bipolar disorder because I manage it through time management instead. Stress relief, avoid caffeine, alcohol and nicotine. I bloody love coffee. Um, I've never smoked, fortunately, and I do like a drink at the occasionally i'm not a heavy drinker a nice glass of whiskey every so often a single malt and if anybody on this wishes to thank me by sending me a nice single malt i would be more than grateful um but caffeine i bloody love coffee i drink too much of it already but it is not good for you it is stomach rot um if you want to guarantee that you're going to have indigestion and drink coffee i'll still do it um partake in physical activity i think that is a huge one that doesn't mean you have to come go and become a gym buddy, a bu uh, gym bunny even. You don't have to go and live there and great, create Arnie Schwarzenegger star muscles. Go for a walk. One of the best things you could do for yourself is to go for a 30 minute walk every day. And I pause deliberately there because I absolutely believe that. I am a qualified yoga instructor. I'm a qualified personal trainer. Um, I hold various things within martial arts and I've had 33 um, amateur boxing fights over the course of my career, not for 20 years now, I haven't fought for 20 years, but um, I have always been around health and fitness and I still will say to anybody who's got the slightest interest in this, go for a walk, 30 minutes a day. Oh my God, the benefits it will do for you are unbelievable. Next up from walking, start doing do a little bit of stretching. Doesn't have to be complicated, very simple stuff. There's 15 minute stretch routines on YouTube that you can find for free. Next up from that is start trying to add some sort of load to yourself, some sort of, and I hate to use the word, but weight train. Um, and again, I'm not talking about getting Steve McQueen muscles. You can weight train with two cans of beans and a bucket. Um, and again, there's plenty of those type of things. This isn't a lecture about that so i will cut that out for now um and move on get more sleep i need eight hours um tip for sleep i'm sure you've heard cold room dark no blue light no tvs um try relaxation techniques i love yoga i try and do about four to five hours of yoga a week um that's on top of my 30 minutes a day of cardio type activity talk to somebody uh it's sometimes easier often easier to talk to people who you are not close to um that is the reason for pubs in the uk i think can you go and talk to the guy in the pub um and Americans have therapists for the same reason. Uh, massive generalizations and sweeping statements. I know I am joking. Um, sometimes easy to talk, talk to somebody different. I am a member of various, well, uh, historically because of my own situation bipolar, I have been in the mental health system. So have had psychiatrists and stuff. But aside from that, I am a member of various accountancy groups. Socks up Simon coming to one being one of them that won't mean anything to you guys but socks up simon is a group of accountants who ha are 
<coughs> buddied up with others in different parts of the countries and we can share our problems with each other. Um, if you would like somebody to talk to that you are not close to and you think I can help you, I am happy to have a once a month, 30 minute chat with you over the telephone or Zoom for free, but you will need to book it through my booking system and you won't be able to get it November, December or January of any year because I am tied up in tax returns. Um, drink more water, two litres a day. Water is boring. I know I much prefer caffeine uh, <coughs> and espresso, but drink more water. Damn, I really do have to hurry up. Um, take control of the situation. Hopefully I've come through that. Manage your time. Again, hopefully I've done through that. Build in buffers. Definitely needed. Learn to say no. Huge one. Learn to say no is a definite, definite thing. You must say no to things. I have just turned down. I've just said no to a another governor's role at a grammar school not too far from me. I have helped successfully turn around the finances of a sixth form college near my offices and it has created a little bit of a stir within the education community of Greater Manchester. And now they all want me as a bloody governor. And I've had to say no, because I just cannot do it as much as I would love to. Um, I just don't can't do them justice. Saying no is hard, particularly for someone like me and particularly for the self-employed. Uh, we don't like saying no because you never know where that next job's coming from. And finally, rest if you are ill. Very topical, I know, at the moment. Uh, if you are ill, rest. Have some hippo time, hippo time. Hippos wallow in the mud and feel sorry for themselves. You need to do the same every so often. And that is 11.01 and I have run over the hour. I am so sorry, but thank you so much for sitting with me and staying with me. My name is Rob Newman. If you wish to contact me, you can get me on 01706 860 255 or inquiries at uk-ccm.com. Our website is there. There are other, within the website, um, there are other free training courses for this. Do have a look at our YouTube channel. I put up all sorts of stuff on there. Again, thank you so much for being with me. I will stay on the call for a few more moments. If anybody has any other questions, uh, <coughs> And good luck organizing your time and your life.